The Highway 78 railroad crossing in Columbus is open again this morning after as many as 45 coal cars derailed. Montana Rail Link got word of a derailment on the mainline track around midnight. Here's a photo of the scene shortly after the cars derailed from Q2 viewer Donna West. MRL information officer Jim Lewis confirms no injuries have been reported and no hazardous materials were involved. A company incident command team will assess the damages. Lewis says the cause of the derailment is unknown at this time. An early estimate by MRL shows around 35 to 45 coal cars fell off the tracks. Columbus Fire Rescue says cars block 3rd Street and Highway 78 crossings. They also confirm there are no health risks and evacuations were not ordered. The Highway 78 crossing opened around 140 this morning, but the other remains closed as crews work to separate the cars and clear the scene. Updating a story we first brought you yesterday morning, police have tied 10 crime scenes, five stolen vehicles, three of them at gunpoint to Monday night's pursuit. 41-year-old Ryan McElmory of Wyoming was taken into custody on a burglary charge, but authorities say more are on the way. He's known to police for drug-related crimes, but was not wanted before Monday night. The chase lasted 50 minutes as McElmory led law enforcement on a high-speed chase through the city, robbing innocent people and firing shots. Police Chief Rich St. John says it's a miracle no one was hurt. This was serious, serious situation, and I'm, I'm so very happy but surprised that nobody got hurt, anybody involved in it, with the distances that were traveled, the speeds, and the time, not to mention gunfire. The night's events began at Performance Auto on Laurel Road, and it was all caught on surveillance cameras. The owners got a call from police, then immediately looked at their cameras in the auto shop, watching as the suspects threw a rock through the store window, then rummaged around. The suspect's initial run-in with police was also caught on cameras, but the ironic thing, according to the business, the suspect, presumably McElmory, did not take anything despite there being electronics and car keys inside the shop. He smashed through the window and it actually made a not a very large hole and it's amazing he didn't cut himself because the glass was quite jagged but he made entrance into the building and then he spent seven minutes in the building going through desk drawers and looking over keys. And in other news, the Billings teen is in custody and under medical evaluation after police found him armed with a gun near a Heights Middle School. The boy was first reported around 1 o'clock as a suicidal teen on foot in the Heights. The Billings School District was notified and as a precaution, all schools in the Heights were placed on lockdown. About an hour later, the boy was located near Castle Rock School. Police took him into custody, a firearm was recovered, and he was transported to the hospital for evaluation. Billings School District Superintendent Greg Upham says in that hour, no one was allowed in or out of the schools. We use a, a, a robocall system where we have everyone in our system. We just um, put together a, a, a release that goes out on their cell, via cell phone. We stay in contact with the police and they keep us updated and as soon as the student is apprehended or if there's any other information that we share, uh, we need to share, then we do that. And in this case, uh, about 45 minutes later, they had apprehended the student and uh, taken him into custody and uh, did what they needed to do. Pol police believe the teen had no other intentions besides self-harm. On the campaign trail, the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., was back in Montana yesterday. Trump Jr. campaigned in Bozeman for U.S. Senate candidate Matt Rosendale. Fox News personality Kimberly Guilfoyle joined him in trying to earn votes for Rosendale over incumbent Senator John Tester. People on both ends of the political spectrum turned out for the event. I went to Great Falls and I wasn't able to get in, so I wanted to be early here so that I would be able to get in. So, yeah, I, don't, I think it's kind of fun being first. <laughs> in our country right now, there's a lot of division and people feel that one of the ways they can really get their voice out there is to protest. A lot of people don't have time to really do anything else. This is something they feel comfortable with. 
Next week, Vice President Mike Pence also plans a campaign stop for Rosendale in the same place at the Gallatin County Fairgrounds. And as Election Day gets closer, MTN's Mike Dennison shows us how the race for Montana's lone U.S. House seat is shaping up candidate by candidate. He starts with incumbent Republican Greg Gianforte. Congressman Greg Gianforte won this seat in a special election just 16 months ago, promising to be a strong soldier for the policies of President Trump. He says that agenda has been good for Montana and that he'd like to keep it going. I think this election is a, it's an election between competing uh, views. Uh, and do we stay with the President Trump's agenda that's gotten our economy going and creating more prosperity? Or do we go back to the failed policies of this last administration that gave us anemic economic growth and poor results for a lot of Montanans? Gianforte says those top policy initiatives are the Republican tax cut bill of 2017, less regulation on business, boosting the military, and securing the border. But we need to end this illegal immigration because it uh, has a negative effect in our communities. It's bringing crime across the border. It's also bringing Mexican meth into Montana communities. Gianforte is being challenged by Democrat Kathleen Williams, a former state legislator from Bozeman, and Libertarian Eleanor Swanson, a Billings attorney. Gianforte and his wife Susan co-founded a software development firm in Bozeman in the mid-1990s, Right Now Technologies. It grew to an international company that employed more than 500 people in Bozeman and was sold to Oracle Corporation in 2012 for $1.8 billion. Gianforte usually touts his business background when talking about his qualifications for the job of congressman. We started our business in our home, created over 550 high-wage jobs, and then spent my career negotiating agreements with business leaders all over the world. That's the experience I'm bringing to Capitol Hill, and I think I'm showing results for the people of Montana. He also points to his work to reduce litigation on forest projects, designating a portion of East Rosebud Creek near Red Lodge as a wild and scenic river, and his chairmanship of an oversight panel on energy and the environment. Gianforte is the favorite to win this race, which hasn't attracted much national attention. But his Democratic challenger, Kathleen Williams, has already pulled one upset this year. We'll learn more about her tomorrow. In Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. And you'll be able to see all three U.S. House candidates in their first live debate this Saturday on Q2 at 6 p.m. Continuing our coverage after a U.S. District Court judge ruled to put the Yellowstone grizzly bear back on the endangered species list, those in favor of the delisting and proposed grizzly hunts are speaking out. Both of Wyoming senators say the judge is ruling with emotion rather than facts. Senator John Barrasso released this statement Tuesday morning. Yet again, the courts are replacing science-based recovery measures with personal political preference. The grizzly is recovered in Wyoming, period. Even the Obama administration determined that the grizzly should be delisted. Senator Mike Enzi says a growing unmanaged grizzly population is dangerous to Wyoming. As the grizzly bear population has increased in Wyoming, so has the danger to livestock, property, and humans. I hope that a quick resolution to keep the Yellowstone grizzly bears delisted can be implemented. Governor Matt Mead says the decision to return grizzly bears to the list of threatened and endangered species is further evidence that the ESA is not working as its drafters intended. He goes on to say Congress should modernize the ESA so we can celebrate successes and focus our efforts on species in need. Elsewhere, Montanans celebrated the 50th annual Governor's Conference on Aging Tuesday by honoring and recognizing the state's centenarians. 124 seniors ranging from 100 to 109 years old are registered in the state of Montana. On Tuesday, nine of them gathered in Helena. This year's theme was Rock Your Age. There were also breakout sessions with topics like nutrition, Alzheimer's, and long-distance caregiving. In Montana, at least 100 and 24 people will be 100 or older by the end of December. In fact, two people in Montana are 109 years old.
The creator of Glacier National Park's Bark Ranger program is being recognized for excellence on a national level. Natural Resources Program Manager Mark Beal, who launched the program, has been awarded the 2017 National Park Service Director's Award for Professional Excellence in Natural Resource Stewardship. The program, funded through private donations to the Glacier National Park Conservancy, launched in 2016 and uses a trained border collie, Gracie, to move bighorn sheep and mountain goats out of areas of high visitor use, such as the Logan Pass parking lot. Beal says the program also gives him the chance to talk about the importance of wildlife safety with visitors, schools, and community groups. And some sad news from Zoo Montana this morning. One of its most unique residents has passed away. JT the Talkin passed away from heart failure. The zoo's executive director shared the news in this photo on his Facebook page last night. He described him as one of the gentlest, most easygoing animals he's ever known. The zoo opened its Talkin exhibit in 2016, where JT lived with fellow younger Talkin Khan. Zoo Montana says JT arrived at the zoo to live out his late years, but they wish it could have been for a bit longer.